Hello everybody. I'm here to talk about the Pentacam and the Corvus ST for refractive surgery screening. My name is Dr. Robert Ang from the Philippines and I'm a consultant and speaker for Oculus. Refractive surgery screening, uh, I need to answer two important questions. Are there any exclusion or disqualification criteria for undergoing a refractive procedure? And what surgical procedure is safe to proceed with? So we will encounter several uh, acronyms in this uh, Pentacam uh, Corvus ST presentation. BAD stands for Berlin Ambrosia Display. CBI is Corneal Biomechanical Index. TBI is Tomographic Biomechanical Index. And TKC is Topographic Keratoconus Staging. Endothelium to anterior lens surface of at least 2.80 millimeters. A specular count which is normal. BDBA should be acceptable for patient to gain vision. And then I'm flexible in terms of topography, pachymetry, BAD, CBI, TBI, because we're not going to touch the cornea anyway. So I have the following refractive screening tools in our clinic. I have the orb scan still. It's an old machine, but it's been there forever. So I'm using it. I have the eye trace, ray tracing abrometer. And now I have the Pentacam AXL and the Corvus ST. Case two is a AS, 24-year-old female. We have a more or less high myope with moderate astigmatism. And you can see here that the topography, keratometric reading-wise, looks like regular astigmatism. Pachymetry is acceptable. Left eye similar, regular astigmatism, pachymetry. IS values acceptable below 0.5 diopters in both eyes. Now, when we go to the uh, pentacam screen, you see that uh, BAD is more or less in the yellow zone. CBI is in the green, so this is a warning sign. So you see here that stiffness is in the red zone, integrated radius borderline, and deformation amplitude borderline. And then the overall TBI is on the orange zone. Left eye, yellow BAD, red CBI, and yellow TBI. So when I see this, I look at the fast screening report, and again, I see a yellow BAD here and a TKC of green on the right eye, and a yellow BAD and a green TKC on the left eye. So the summary report for this patient is, this is a high myopia with low cylinder, acceptable pachymetry, astigmatism regular and IS acceptable. So if I only screen using my old tools, this will be okay to proceed with LASIK. But because I now have the Pentacam and Corvus ST system, it shows me a different picture or different scenario. BAD is yellow, CBI is red, TBI is yellow, internal ACD is good. So I think this is a case of subclinical weak cornea and i wouldn't have caught this if i didn't have the pentacam corvis st system with the flap cut and significant tissue removal i think we will cause this cornea to decompensate and become ectasia later on so in this case i would suggest a trans epithelial trk or an icl for this patient if we proceed with ICL. The cataract pre-op screen of the Pentacam has two important data that I need for ICL calculation. Here is the horizontal white to white, 11.4. And here's the ACD internal of 3.33. So we use the ACD internal, which means endothelium to the anterior lens surface when we calculate for ICL. Left eye, again, you need these two data to calculate for your ICL. So next case, BDL. This one is a 47-year-old female. Again, high myope with moderate astigmatism. In this screen, you see a very hot-looking keratometric map. You see very steep cornea with high astigmatism, a little bit irregular here, hotter zone inferiorly, and a thin cornea. Left eye, you see again, slightly irregular, hotter, inferior astigmatism and thin cornea. 
the IS values, you see that it's 1.26 and 1.53. So higher than my usual and it's a warning sign for me. Now, when we go to the uh, biomechanical tomographic assessment screen, we again confirm that it's a thin cornea, a little bit of an irregular astigmatism over here. Thickness profile seems okay. When we go, and BAD is green. When we go to the CBI, see it's in the yellow zone, a little bit of borderline integrated radius. Stiffness is suspicious here on the red zone. And the TBI overall assessment is in the orange near the red zone. And one thing uh, about this is it gives me this warning sign here on the TKC screen that it's KC1 or probably a mild keratoconus case in this eye. Left eye shows again thin cornea, a little bit of irregular cylinder here. BAD still borderline green. CBI is yellow. TBI is orange. So if I assess this patient, I will look at the fast screening again. And AC depth is 2.74 on the right and 2.76 on the left with a BAD in the yellow band. So summary for this patient is a high myope with moderate cylinder, a thin cornea and steep case. Topography astigmatism seems grossly normal, maybe a little bit of irregularity, but ISO, IS value is definitely above normal. So this uh, is supported by my Pentacam Corvus system wherein it shows that CBI is yellow and TBI is orange. And for the first time, I see this KC1 in the OD. This patient also has a shallow ACD. So my assessment is this is a thin cornea. Again, because of the Pentacam Corvus system, I think that the integrity of the cornea is questionable and it gives me this sign KC1. This patient has a shallow anterior chamber depth. Now, with a high amount of corneal tissue removal and the thin cornea to begin with, I think this is again a high risk for post-refractive screening ectasia, even if we do a PRK or a transepithelial PRK. And because of the shallow ACD, then this patient for me is not a candidate for LASIK, PRK, or ICL because this patient is 47 already, then I would suggest a clear lens extraction with probably a premium IOL since all other uh, parameters seems to be okay, except that we don't want the cornea. Now, the cataract pre-op screen gives us important data in case you want to calculate the IOL power. So, in this screen, you will see that this is the standard keratometric readings. And in this part of the screen, you will see the total cornea refractive power uh, measurement. So it depends which kind of keratometry you want to use for which calculator. The ACD is here external. So if we calculate the IOL power, we use the ACD external meaning from the cornea epithelium to the retina. Whereas if you use uh, ACD for ICL calculation, you use the internal, this one. And in the bottom screen, you see this axial length. So you will need the axial length, the ACD and the keratometry to calculate for your IOL power. The good thing about the Pentacam AXL and the wave is it incorporates IOL calculation. So you can use the IOL calculation in the computer, in the computer of the system, or you can lift this data and calculate yourself online. So this is the left eye. Again, the parameters are here for us to use. Last case is a 19-year-old female. You see this uh, patient is a mild to moderate myope. And we use this, this time, I will not use my old um, machines for uh, checking if they're qualified for refractive surgery. This one, we will only use the Pentacam Corvus ST and you can see the pachymetry is acceptable. 
uh, topography seems acceptable, BAD is green, CBI is a little bit orange. You see that integrated radius and BA ratio are borderline and stiffness is borderline. TBI is green. In the left eye, again, acceptable corneal thickness, acceptable keratometry, uh, topography, BAD is green. The left eye has a yellow band CBI. Uh, integrated radius is green. The others seem to be in the borderline. And the TBI is green. The fast screening report also shows us that the BAD is green and TKC is on the green zone. Left eye, BAD is green and TKC is in the green zone. So in this patient, it's a moderate myope with low cylinder. The topography looks regular and normal. The BAD is green, TBI is green, TKC is green. Only the CBI is slightly orange. ACD is deep. So this patient seems to be qualified for LASIK, trans-PRK, or ICL. Eventually, this patient underwent trans-PRK because the patient asked me what I think, and I explained to them the parameters given to me by the Pentacam Corvus ST, and I think to be on the safe side, we just proceed with trans prk And one month after surgery, vision is 2020 with a good refraction. Now, we also do some reading, uh, measurements of the Pentacam Corvus ST post-op. And in this uh, measurement, we see that cornea is thinner after surgery. The slope is different now because of post-op. There is no reading of BAD and TBI anymore because this patient has undergone corneal refractive surgery. But it still has the biomechanical assessment, which I think is important to monitor patients post-op. So in this case, the CBI is on the green zone, meaning this eye is in the distribution of normal post-PRK patients. So good, good reading for this patient. And one more important data in this screen post-op is it has this IOP non-contact, which is your standard IOP, and it also obtains a biomechanical corrected IOP for measuring corneas that are suspicious, thin, or post-op. So the post-op readings here are important for these two measurements, uh, biomechanical indices and biomechanical IOP. This is the right eye and this is the left eye. So in summary, we all have standard refractive screening tools which measure topography, irregularities in curvature, and pachymetry. Uh, these are common indices that we, uh, that we measure for any type of uh, screening uh, system. But with the Pentacam Corvus ST system, I find this superior and adds value to my previous machines of orb scan and eye trace because the integration of biomechanical indices enhances my screening protocol. It adds corneal dynamics and strength of the corneal tissue, which was not measurable with my other uh, screening devices. It also gives me the ability to measure biomechanical IOP for thin corneas or for post-corneal refractive surgery corneas. And this system, the Pentacam Corvus ST, has a potential to be a good post-op monitoring tool for all eyes who underwent corneal laser refractive surgery. So in my practice, instead of determining if the patient is qualified for LASIK, I try to find possible reasons which may disqualify them. Now, if they're disqualified for LASIK, I don't lose the patient, so I'm not afraid that I'm being more strict in my criteria because they still can undergo transepithelial PRK or ICL. But one thing I notice from the patient's feedback is it gives them great comfort that I showed them technical evidence of why LASIK is not for them, but maybe these other procedures, trans PRK or ICL, is recommended and safer for them. So measuring and understanding biomechanics with this Pentacam Corvus ST system 
gives an additional layer of safety which will definitely benefit both patient and surgeon.